Hey guys, my name is Doc Jade, and welcome to episode two of the series where we try to hit one million green circuits per hour in Factorio. In case you didn't watch the last episode, all we really did was set up a pretty standard starter base and surround it with turret and walls. Here's what it looks like now. Anyway, this episode we're going to be doing a bit more interesting stuff. But first we have to tear down this inner wall we built because it's not really useful anymore and it just takes up space. There we go. So, what's on the agenda today? Oil. Then we'll work on trains and getting some robots. But first we have to defend our little oil outpost, so we'll start working on a wall for that. Almost done with the wall now, but there's a little biter nest off to our east I gotta take care of first. There we go. Anyway, back to building the wall. There we go. Oil patch is now defended. Now it's time to put pump jacks on the oil field, but I actually haven't researched them yet. First, I need to research green science packs, then engines, then automation 2, then fluid handling, and then finally I can unlock pump jacks. So I should probably start working on green science, but first I'm going to build a little bit of personal automation, because, you know, I haven't had a mall yet, and I've been crafting everything by hand, which is pretty slow. So having some belts and inserters laying around will be really useful in the long term. Now let's start working on red science automation, for real this time, no more temporary setups. Now you may have noticed I don't have any gaps in my bus, well, it's on purpose, because I like building spaghetti. And there we go, red science is done. Now I'll hook up some labs real quick so I can finish researching logistics science packs, and then we'll start working on automating said logistics science packs. Now I'll route the belt so I can have green science on the bus, and I'll start working on getting belts produced for the green science. There we go. Just realized I didn't automate lamps yet, so I'll do that real quick. Iron production's getting really anemic. Gonna have to fix it soon. Anyway, now it's time to automate inserters for the green science packs. And there we go, that's green science. Now we'll throw the green science into the labs real quick and we can start working on the rest of our research. But it looks like it's time to upgrade power again. I went ahead and added a second pump so I could make it twice as big this time. I shouldn't have to come back and upgrade it for a while now. Looks good. We're only using a quarter of our total power output now. Anyway, Logistics 2 is done being researched now so we can use it to try to help relieve our iron problem. Just gonna copy and paste this whole smelting array real quick. Now I'm gonna build some more miners, we're gonna stick them on red belts instead of yellow belts this time, because red belts have twice the throughput as yellow belts. And then we can split them back out into two yellow belts right before the furnaces, because they only take a yellow belt. Now we'll hook up the output of our new furnace array into the main bus. There we go, tons of iron plates again. Next we'll research engines so we can start working towards pump jacks. With engines done being researched, we can start working on automation too, which is also required for the pump jacks. There we go, now we can start researching fluid handling. Now we can finally start to research pump jacks. Finally, pump jacks. Now we can start working on oil. I was going to research flamethrowers here, but I realized I actually need to do military science first, so I'll cue that. There's military too, now we can start working on flammables. There's flammables, and now we can research projectile damage for our gun turrets. Now with that research done, we'll move on to projectile shooting speed, which will increase the speed we and our turrets can shoot at. Now I'm going to need steel later for trains and stuff, so I'm going to set that up real quick. And there's weapon shooting speed. Now I'll research tool belts so I can have some more room in my inventory. And after placing that power pole, steel production is switched on. Now I can pick up some of the steel and I can make some pump jacks. Finally! Now I'll go ahead and start placing those pump jacks on the oil field. And now we have oil production. Need somewhere to store it though, so I'll make a storage tank real quick. Now, Jaden, I hear you asking, how are we going to get that oil all the way back to our base? Well, I've got an answer for you. We're going to use trains. Once trains are done, we research fluid wagons so we can actually start to move the oil around. 
Real quick, I'll set up engine production so we can make trains, and we'll also need engines for stuff later, so it's good to get a stockpile going. I had just enough room to throw in this little tiny pipe production. Isn't it cute? Anyway, now we have engine production, and there's fluid wagons. Now I'll research train stations so the train can automatically move back and forth once I build the rail. Now I'll start working on the railway, but it's a pain in the butt to place early game without bots, so it's going to take me a while. Now train stations are done. I'll use them once I finish this rail. Real quick, we're also going to queue up plastics for research, because we'll need it later. Now plastics is done being researched, and we can start setting up our oil pickup spot. After going and getting engines for pumps, I've got the station built. Let's go for a little test drive, shall we? I forgot to build a train station over here, so I'll do that real quick. Now it's time to hook up oil to the train station. There we go. Oil's now being loaded onto the train. Now the other station can unload the oil. Which means it's time to set up oil refining. I don't actually have advanced oil processing unlocked yet. I still need to research sulfuric acid, so I'll do that now. But at least I can set up some basic oil refining, which will turn oil into petroleum gas. Plastic setup is pretty easy. All it needs is petroleum, gas, and coal. So we'll go grab some coal off the main belt and shoot it over here real quick. Once we hook up the petroleum, we've got plastic. Let's put that on the main bus real quick. Also in the background, I've been researching cliff explosives, and they're finally done. Now I'll research some lab speed, just because. Now to set up cliff explosives, I'll need some sulfur, so I'll make some of that real quick. And we'll put sulfur on the bus too, because why the heck not? Now that we're getting some sulfur, I can make some cliff explosives. Now I can finally get those stupid cliffs out of my way! But for that, I need regular explosives first, so I'll set those up real quick. I handcrafted a couple of them real quick, and I'm pleased to report they work as advertised. Much better. Now I'll start working towards getting some robots, but to get robots, I need blue science, and to get blue science, I need red circuits. So I'll start researching those red circuits, which doesn't take very long, and I'll start building them. Oh, and I'll start researching blue science before I forget. And there's chemical science, or blue science if you want to call it that. We're going to research some mining productivity, so hopefully it'll help with our iron ore problem. And there's mining productivity. Now I'll research modular armor so I can put a personal roboport in it. What the personal roboport lets me do is carry robots around and they'll build for me. And there's modular armor. I'll start crafting that modular armor by hand real quick so I have it later. Now I'll hook up green circuits, then I'll hook up copper. And now we've got red circuit production. Real quick, I'll equip that modular armor, which will give me a couple more inventory slots. Right here I realize I want to put the red circuits right next to the green circuits, but there isn't any room. And I want to put the red and green signs on the outside instead of the middle. So I make a giant mess. I decide to tear up the whole bus and rearrange it. For no reason other than to waste 10 minutes and add even more spaghetti to the base. And there we go. Here's the awful spaghetti mess that resulted. Beautiful, isn't she? Anyway, I'm going to research batteries real quick so I can start working on robots. There's batteries done. Now I'll start researching advanced oil processing because I need the heavy oil to turn into lubricant. But that research requires blue science, so I have to go build that first. But that's a pretty easy build because everything I need is already on the bus. This is why you plan ahead, kids. There's blue science. Now we'll pipe it into some labs real quick so we can start that research. I don't think the research is going fast enough, so I build some more labs. And there's advanced oil processing. Next on the list is lubricant. We're going to need them for the electric engines that go in the robots. I forgot to record that lubricant research finishing, but there's electric engines finishing. Also, look at these stupid biters. Now we can research robotics. Now we need lubricant to make those electric engines for the robots. But lubricant is made with heavy oil, which is different from the petroleum gas we've been using so far, so I have to set up a new refinery, which uses a different recipe. Real quick, I'm going to research construction robots while we're building the rest of the stuff to build the actual robots to build construction robots. Confusing, isn't it? Speaking of construction robots, there's construction robots. Now I'll plug in our oil refining setup. Almost forgot this one. And there we go. Now we make all three kinds of oil. 
The heavy oil is turned into lubricant, and once we don't need lubricant anymore, it's turned into light oil, and then that light oil is turned into petroleum, which we can use for basically everything else. Now we're gonna set up some electric engine production. Once we plug in the lubricant supply, there's electric engines. Now we're gonna sneak some belts around so we can make sulfuric acid for the batteries we're gonna need later. We need the batteries so we can build the robots and so I can put batteries in my personal suit to keep it charged while I have that personal roboport we talked about earlier. And there's battery production, pretty easy. We're gonna make it a bit larger since I know we're gonna need a lot of them later. Now with all the ingredients done, we can start making flying robot frames, which is the last step before creating construction robots. Now the batteries are produced in a kind of weird spot and I don't really want to put them on the bus, so I'm going to have to snake them through all of this other production just so I can get them up to produce the flying robot frames. And that's all the ingredients hooked up. And there we go, we're starting to make flying robot frames. Now we're gonna stuff them in a chest just temporarily. Since the green circuits are already over here, I'm gonna set up an assembler so we can make the robots. And there's solar research done. Now we're gonna research personal solar which will go in our suit and power our personal RoboPort. I also set up some crafting for regular RoboPorts. Those are the kind you place on the ground all over the place. And personal solar's done now. Now we can finally research personal RoboPorts. I feel like I've said that word too many times at this point. It doesn't have any meaning anymore. Now I'm gonna grab all the ingredients so I can craft one really quick. I also researched personal batteries so we can put them in our suit and use the solar power we gain over the day to charge them so we can keep using the robots at night. Also, I'm going to research night vision so you guys can see the map better during the night. There we go. I know I'm going to want some more robots so I'll expand this production a little bit. Now I can start throwing all that equipment into my suit so we can start using robots soon. The level 1 personal roboport can only support 10 bots at a time so I'll grab 10 of them real quick and then we can go try it out. Works like a charm. Having these robots is going to significantly speed up the process of building new stuff. Look how excited I am. We've got some extra robots, so we're going to stick them in a roboport. Roboports are basically the charging station and home of the bots. Real quick, I'm going to research circuit networks to make sure we don't put too many robots in the roboport. And there's night vision. Look at that. Here's how you make sure that your roboport doesn't end up with too many robots. You connect the RoboPort to an inserter with a wire, and then you change the mode to Read Robot Statistics. It'll add these letters to the output of the wire. The letters have values that you can read with these little conditions that you can set on stuff like inserters. So we're going to set it up so it doesn't put more than 100 robots in the RoboPort. So if Z is less than 100, meaning there's less than 100 construction robots, we're going to turn on the inserter. Now, we've already hit that goal of 100 robots in the RoboPort, so I'm going to raise it to 200 just so you guys can see how it works. Since there isn't 200 robots in the RoboPort already, it'll turn it back on and start putting them in. I'm going to turn that back down to 100, though. I'm going to put this red circuit on the ground real quick just so I can remind myself that I need to build more red circuit production next time. Speaking of next time, this episode is over. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and until next time, my name's Doc Jade. Bye bye